Good afternoon and welcome to NTV News. I am Siksha Sharma. Let's take a look into the headlines first. The results of this year's secondary education examinations SEE published 47.86% students passed. Monsoon induced disasters claimed at least 14 lives across the country in the past 48 hours. Heavy rain forecast for the next couple of days. Bolivian army generals attempted coup in Bolivia fails. President Louis Arts called for international support. And South Africa is just past Afghanistan to reach the final of the World Cup. India meets England in other semis tonight. NTV News taking a look into news in detail. Now, the National Examinations Board Examinations Control Office has published the results of this year's secondary education examinations, SEE. According to Examination Controller Nandalal Podil, out of 464,785 students appeared in the SEE exam, 47.86% passed. A total of 242,092 students have passed towards a regular category. Out of those who have qualified, 186 have secured full GPA, a total of 52.14% candidates who appeared in the examination obtained non-grade NG. They will have to take the grade increase test again. He informed that the examination of 221 students has been cancelled. Examination controller Powder said that the results have been published as per the letter grading guidelines 2078 Bikram Sambath. At least 14 people have died and 16 people have been injured across the country due to monsoon invoked natural disasters since Tuesday morning, says the Ministry of Home Affairs. Ministry's National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Authority, NDRRM, has said a total of 44 incidents of natural disaster occurred in the past 48 hours across the country. The weather forecasting division has appealed to avoid possible damage such as floods, landslides and soil erosion. Bagmati Koshi and Gandaki regions have received heavy rainfall due to influence of monsoon winds. The department has predicted heavy rains in the eastern part of the country for three more days. Roads were blocked in 10 different areas and 14 cattle were killed. According to the information received from the authority, eight people died and five injured in the landslide, five died and three injured in lightning, and one died and two went missing in the floods. Authorities have urged for caution, citing possibility of heavy rain in one or two places of Koshi, Madhesh, Bagmati and Gondaki provinces. They say monsoonal downpour may cause high discharge in rivers and tributaries. Let's take a look into a short break. More news follows up on the other side. You stay with us. Welcome back to NTV News, taking a look into further updates. Both Houses of the Federal Parliament are sitting today. The meeting of the House of Representatives is on the way. One meeting of the National Assembly is scheduled for 1.15 p.m. As per the schedule published by the Parliament Secretariat, Speaker Dev Kimile will nominate the names of members to Parliament's Business Advisory Committee. Also, Speaker Kimile is scheduled to change the names of members in the Parliamentary Hearing Committee, a joint committee of the Upper and Lower House. Likewise, members of other thematic committees of the House of Representatives will also be changed. Likewise, the Minister for Culture, Tourism and Civil Aviation, Hidbadu Tamang, will float a proposal seeking deliberations on preservation of records. First Amendment Bill that was forwarded up in passage from the House Committee on International Relations. Main opposition party Nepali Congress has decided to file collective amendment proposal on the investment facilitation bill. A meeting of the party's parliamentary party held in Singh Adarbar yesterday took the decision to this effect after consultation with a section of entrepreneurs, industrialists and investors on the investment facilitation bill. The decision was made to put amendment proposal in group seeking legal reforms in the bill which is not investment friendly, said the House of Representatives member Nagina Yadav, who also attended the meeting. Lawmaker Yadav said there was a need of eight-point amendments in the areas including land sealing, land acquisition, forest, public-private partnership, investment, and special economic zone. 
Taking you to the international front wherein China continues to reinforce its grip East China, Zhangxi and Anhui provinces, leading to landslides, swollen rivers, severe street water logging and traffic disruptions in the past two days. The torrential rains triggered a landslide in Yugan County of Jiangxi province on Tuesday, blocking a road with over 700 cubic meters earth. Local officials and staff members from emergency departments rushed to the site and deployed personnel and excavators to clear the earth from the road. As a thoroughfare for four administrative villages, its closure affected about 6,000 villagers. Are the highlights of what's coming up next? Bolivian police have arrested the leader of an attempted coup hours after the presidential palace in the capital La Paz was stormed by soldiers. Armored vehicles and troops had taken up position on Murillo Square where key government buildings are located. They all later withdrew. The rebel military leader in charge, General Juan Jose Juniga, had said he wanted to restructure democracy and that while he respected President Luis Arce for now, there would be a change of government. He is now under arrest. The public prosecutor's office has opened a criminal investigation into the matter. Taking you to North Korea, where North Korea sent trashed field balloons across the border into South again on the night of the June 25. Due to North Korean balloons, the flight operations at the Incheon International Airport were suspended or delayed for two hours. Flights that were scheduled to arrive at the airport were cancelled en masse. Some had to return. North Korea began sending trash balloons at around 9.50 p.m. Tuesday. It's the sixth time the North sent trash balloons since May 28. This time they were sent for two days in a row, causing the public to make emergency calls. As of 4 a.m. of Wednesday, 36 reports of trash balloons were received in Seoul alone. On Tuesday, more than 100 balloons were found in Seoul and the northern part of Gyeonggi into province. The South Korean military resumed loudspeaker broadcast on June the 9th in response to the North's trash balloons, but suspended them a day later. Uh, let's take a look into yet another news where China Post on Wednesday opened its first independent intercontinental flight route linking Nanjing City, East China, Jiangsu Province and Luxembourg and covering 36 European countries. The new route is expected to cut delivery time for major European destinations to at a maximum 4 to 7 days. The flight for the new route is the wide-body all-cargo Boeing 777F aircraft introduced by China Post for the first time. Its maximum commercial weight can reach 102 tons and the flight from Nanjing to Luxembourg Airport in Findel can be completed in less than 11 hours. Let's take a look into other highlights of what's coming up next. Time for sports. South Africa ended the run of semi final heartache by thrashing Afghanistan to reach the first men's T20 World Cup final. The Proteas, who had failed to progress from all seven of the previous World Cup semi finals across formats, dismissed Afghanistan for 56 in 11.5 overs on a difficult pitch on the way to a nine wicket win in Trinidad. Marco Jansen removed Ramanullah Gurbaz, the tournament's leading run scorer in Afghanistan's dramatic run to the first semi-final and the score was soon 28-6. to six. Meanwhile, in the other semi-final schedule for tonight, England is meeting India. Georgia reached her first major tournament after stunning Portugal two goals to nil and reached the Euro 2024 knockout stage. Now they've got better one step. It came through an upset of the highest order, overcoming the odds to stun Portugal 2-0 in the final group stage game and write a new chapter in the history of the nation. And this brings us to the end of the bulletin, a quick recap of the headlines.
results of this year's secondary education examination SEE published 47.86% passed. Monsoon induced disasters claim at least 40 lives across the country in 48 hours. Heavy rain forecast for the next couple of days. Bolivian Army General Sotebit Crew in Bolivia faced President Luis Arc calls for international support. And South Africa eases past Afghanistan to reach the final of the 20 World Cup. India meets England in other semis tonight. That's all for now. Thank you for watching. Have a great day ahead and a must day.